good afternoon and welcome to Dead with Part of Part of Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Len Stacy, and we have a two parter today. Well, actually, it's MCK Friday, but we have two different sets of chiefs who will be stepping in uh, as part of the show. In the second part, I'll be joined by Chief Ross Montour and Chief Harry Rice. And uh, flying solo all by herself, she's a big girl, <laughs> is Chief <laughs> Gina Dear. Welcome, Gina. How Thank are you? You, you look tired. I guess it's all this traveling that's... Uh... It's catching up to me. I'm at a point where I actually need rest in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. Things are just getting hot. Eh? <laughs> right. Uh... So I guess uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, the... Just this week you were at the Indigenous Cannabis Conference um, in Ottawa, I believe. Was it Ottawa? Yes. Yeah, Ottawa. Yes. So maybe we could talk a little bit about that and how that went. Well... I, I was asked to be a speaker. Uh, there's a lot of interest in what Ganawage has done passing the law. Uh, I've actually spoke on this previously at uh, McGill um, before the law was actually passed and now that it has been passed, uh, I was invited to speak at this conference. Uh, a lot of First Nations are at a loss uh, as to what to do, you know, what this new legislation and legalization of um, marijuana and there's a great deal of fear around that because of the dependent population yes. that our communities have you know on substance so I think for us um, one of the questions I was asked uh, later on after the presentation was where does one begin <laughs> and, and it's true if you really think about it, you yeah. know, the government, I think, did this on purpose to get people scrounging all over instead of being ready, you know, if you oh, think about it. Absolutely. I, I mean, the, the way that it passed and how quickly it passed, I don't think the um, full consideration was given. Forget First Nations. That was an afterthought. We all know that because later on they were scrambling and putting together a committee to look at this and say, "Oh my God, you know, we we didn't consult, we didn't do anything." Um, so the provinces were scrambling yeah. and and trying to figure it out. And luckily for us at MCK, the Moha Council, um, we wanted to be proactive in this area. We understand that, um, you know, there is issues around substance abuse and Derek Montour um, has informed us, you know, that cannabis is actually the um, second biggest um, issue um, for abuse in the community yeah. that they deal with and, and alcohol, of course, being first. So, I mean, it, it is really a scary thing. Um, we are a zero tolerance community and people are wondering, like, oh, what does that mean now for us? Well, we still are a zero tolerance community. We have a legalized product like alcohol, and that's what I tell people, compare it to that. So again, going back to, you know, the conference, I, I was asked, like, where does one start? And I said, well, MCK put together a working group. And when we did that, um, of course, economic opportunity was part of, you know, this working group. And as we started to educate ourselves, um, we had decided to split the group and have, you know, a component that focused more on the law and one that focused on the uh, possible um, business side opportunities. And that was where we started, educating ourselves as a working group and getting information. Speaking with uh, community and organizations was the next step, consulting. And it was really a very lengthy and eye-opening process uh, because there's such a, a variance in opinion on, on the product, right? Absolutely. Um, because people are using it medically and look at it as a medicine. There are some who view it, you know, as something that's evil. It's a mind changer and we really shouldn't be utilizing it. So, and there was a variance of, of uh, opinions in between. So the council table said, listen, we need to do something and let's split this working group, but let's have the law first and foremost because safety and health was you know our, our biggest concern so as a as a working group for the um, business side we really slowed down what we were doing what we continued to do in the meantime was investigate all the opportunities that were out there and I was working more on that side and Rhonda kind of went with the uh, drafting of the law I found there are so many different industries from this cannabis product 
it's incredible you know from um the extraction of the plant um the conference also had hemp it wasn't just cannabis yeah. but it was hemp which is another product right from that and hemp i mean you have clothing that's made from hemp outside of the pharmaceutical market here's another big product and then you have the food part of it right, right. because it's consumed and hemp is a protein that um you can replace rather than have protein shakes so there was like so much information that was gathered and i was telling the uh, individuals that came and speak to me after the conference like you really need to educate yourself and they were asking well could you help us out could you share information i said absolutely you know we we are here for that reason you know so i have some that have um asked to come and meet with me or will send me an email and ask if i could share some of the educational stuff that we found so we'll, we'll be doing that one community even said i hate to say it but we almost need to be handheld because mm. we really don't know where to begin and i said listen you know we've come a long way in gunawage and i'll share anything with you that i can and you know I think it's important because the fear of, you know, what it means for communities is great. For us, we have a lot of resources here, right? We have the social services and uh, we have education behind that. We have the peacekeepers. I mean, we just have a whole volume of uh, we have resources. To, yeah. Very close access to treatment center. Right. Yes. And, and gun is a dog. Eh? So, you know, support systems are there. We have uh, AA and a groups right within the community. So things are in place. They may need some help, support, whatever. Yeah. But other communities don't have those things at all. And they're not even close no. to those no. resources. No. So I can understand that. And, you know, I, I'm an outside thinker. I, I think very um, broad. And if I can help other First Nations, that's why I do a lot of work with, you know, Iroquois Caucus or attend AFN, AFNQL, because I think the networking is great and the support is great. Uh, from the conference yesterday, one of the other things that came out of it was an individual said to me, well, this is uh, the birth of something new. And maybe as First Nations, we ought to be looking at a law that we could all utilize rather than the piecework. Mm -hmm. um, this individual was um, working in economic development in his community and they do mining. And he talked about the mining industry and how they work in silos. And it's not advantageous for them, especially when it comes to government and making agreements around, you know, the products. And they said, here we have something new and maybe we should be working together. And that's the first time I've ever heard. That's interesting. Yeah, that concept from outside of uh, the Iroquois caucus, because we, we talk all the time about doing things together. So I think it, it could be a bigger conversation to strike up you know, For now sure. that it's in its infancy, you know. And, and, and I think, like you said, it, it hits everybody different ways. And, and this will be the first time that people just don't know how to react because there's so many elements. And I think you've described probably the big whole spear on this because it's a big thing. It, it is. It's not just, you know, uh, just the addictions part. It's just not the business part. It's, it's the implications. And it's big. It's huge. Um so for, for Gunawage, we've been very lucky, you know, to have all of these resources to be able to tap into, to discuss, and, and really know how it is um, going to affect our community. Because the reality is the product's already here, right? Yeah. It's just been an illegal product, yeah. and the abuses have been there. But here's the new, you know, um, industry of the product. And... Um, Again, you know, pharmaceutical market is going to be huge. I think that's really where the future is going to lie. Um, I've mentioned it before. Israel is leaps and bounds ahead in research, you know, and finding new uses for the product. And again, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to get high. There's extraction of the product. Yeah. Um, you know, CBD is something that a lot of people are using for pain management, and there's no THC, so there's no chance of getting high. Um yeah, so it's really interesting, and I, I really am flattered at how people are viewing Gunawage and how they are listening, you know, to what we're doing and, and want to learn more from us. Um, I tell them we're still on the learning curve. <laughs> this is going to be endless. Uh, I mean, the, the provinces are in the same boat, you know, still trying to work out all the kinks, and uh, but we're really being proactive on it.
which I think is a change because usually we have to react and then we have to push people and we have to, I mean, it's, it's been pretty much the same pattern forever. Anytime we've needed to get something right. Right. <laughs> and one of the things I had said yesterday was, um, we have passed the law and we have taken a lot of lesson from the tobacco industry, right? So that's why the moratorium was put in place within the community. And interestingly enough, I said, we are still working on the tobacco law and it hasn't <laughs> passed, but cannabis law has. So, interesting, very right? interesting. Yes, and again, it comes uh, because something in its infancy, right? Whereas the tobacco industry had kind of developed over time and then the need for a law was recognized by certain individuals and other individuals are still resistant to that and even though it's really i think harmed the industry at this point by not having a law because we're how do you defend anything when you don't have anything in place so yeah. If you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to K1037, Day the Watharda, Port Line Talk Show. I'm joined by Chief Gina Deer, and we're talking about her one of her trips uh, <laughs> recently. She's been very busy. Um, I just wanted to ask one question in terms of the community. Where do we go now? Well, we're uh, there's a call out for board members on the Health and Safety Board, if I'm correct, on... Um, you know, the Cannabis Control Board, they're putting that together. And once that board is together, then they're going to start with the regulations. Okay. And then from there, well, then you can look at the licensing. What is that, all of that going to look like, right? So that was the um, primary concern with council is establishing that. And we were actually held back, you know, from doing too much as a, um, as a working group for the uh, business side of it because it's very important to keep, a little bit of a distance, I guess, between the two. Okay. So it doesn't look like we've created things just to make it for us, uh, you know, in the business side. Okay. Uh, another uh, question is uh, one of the things, um, and I asked this of, of the candidates this week, and does a lot of this have to do with transparency and where funding would go? Say, as a collective, if we, as a community, decide it, we're going to put X amount of dollars to the healing, tre treatment, education, et cetera, et cetera, to help boom that piece up, because we know there's shortages, and I actually know because I worked in that field, so I know, right. I know it's low. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the community, here's our plan. We're going to do this, 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 and this. Do you think sometimes that that's a block in this? Because, no. Um, or is, no, I is think that it's important to let people know what we're going to start using funds for. Right. That's one of the biggest questions, you know, and I've had that already, you know, that experience through Mohawk Online. Yes. And it's a socioeconomic uh, endeavor, and people are seeing, you know, the benefits. Again, with Mohawk Online, we do give monies to gambling uh, addiction, yeah. you know, and I think here um, the plan has been there from day one to give monies back uh, if we do develop an industry, definitely to give money back on, on um, the addiction side and the education side. Yeah. Again, you know, our law has got the age of 21, you know, for, for retail in the community, should we have retail. Right. And... That prompts people to say, well, why? And we said, well, because that's in line with what is acceptable to community should there be retail. And that's because of the developing brain of the youth. Yeah. And it'll prompt youth to ask that question also. Well, why? We can get it anywhere else. Well, you know what? Here, we know your brain is still developing. We don't want to make it easy. We want to give you education and learn about the harms for you for the future, right? Ultimately, people will decide for themselves what yeah. to do, but... I, I posted something and I had some youth laugh at it. So, of course, me being who I am, I did a little bit of education and uh, that was the end of the laughing comments. But uh, a lot of what I said to them, they didn't know. Really? And, and that was scary. And these are young people, young 20s, 18, 19, 20. They're over 18. Right. But, you know, they thought it was hilarious. And I said, just so you know, I said, uh, I worked in the field and long before this became a topic. Right. And I said, this is what the research said. Da, 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 da. I don't think they'll comment on my thing, but I got my point across that, you know, you really need to learn what you're doing. Yes. And I said, some of the scary things, I said, if you look at, and then I went into a, a went a little further because I, I talked about the pharmaceutical companies and how some of the drugs that are pain medication turned into street 
yes. drugs oh, laced with every kind of thing. And I said, you have to think about it. I said, a lot of dealers really don't care. They're more worried of keeping you as a client, getting their lining their pockets. And it Absolutely. was like, and, and it, but you know, I, I get on my high horse now and then, but I couldn't <laughs> help it. You know? I have a question from a listener. Uh, tobacco law is more important to the community of cannabis. Do we need the regulate why when we need it, the regulation started? MCK is holding it up. Why was it such a rush for cannabis three years waiting for tobacco? This is from a community member. We haven't held uh, up anything, actually. The uh, proponents from the tobacco uh, group were meeting with um, our labor office because there are issues between the labor law and the tobacco law, and that needed to be resolved, right? We're Mm -hmm. not the proponents of that. So that's where that's being held up. As far as cannabis law, we were the proponents and, you know, we've done whatever is necessary to keep in line with all of our other laws, which is really important. And again, like I said, health and safety was very important on the legalized products. So, of course, you know, we really delved into this to ensure that, you know, we could put measures in place Mm -hmm. for community members. I have a comment from a, a community member, elder in the community with a bad shoulder, took an edible and ended up in the emergency room, emergency room needing to get her stomach pumped, and she was supporting the moratorium. And again, I, I think sometimes what people don't understand is you have to know a lot about your body. You have to know a lot about taking stuff. You need to do your research. You just don't go and pop anything, not even from doctors. And most medical people will say, you need to ask questions because under certain conditions, you can and cannot take certain things, you know? And and that's what's really concerning. And this is the education part of it, you know? Yes, because I've been to meetings where people have stood up and said, well, I've been growing a long time and I've been using this a long time and this is medicine, but you're making edibles and you don't even know your content of THC because when I went out there and started looking at this product, right, there's different levels of THC for pain and yeah. sleep and depending what your ailment is and when you do it in a scientific manner, you know exactly the concentration you're getting of something, right? Absolutely. So somebody who just tries to bake things and selling it and saying, well, I've done this forever, no, that's... That's why there's a moratorium in place. That's why there's all of these regulations that need to be there. You're talking about people's health, especially somebody who's not well and has an illness such as cancer. You want an exact science on your product. And and we had another comment. Edibles are still illegal, so just just to shout out on that. I have one more question for you because we're coming down. Um, With the uh, Gunawage Cannabis Law, will it hold up in Quebec court? Will it hold up in Quebec court? Absolutely. I don't see why it shouldn't. No, I, I, I guess we've sometimes- fallen in line with what is out there right. where we've actually upped ours. I, I think ours, our law, our law is stronger and more protecting of our community members. Okay. You have about a minute. Any, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I've recently gone to London. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to get to London. I was looking forward to that one, too. Yes, and I have to say I'm still exhausted from that experience. Uh, it's not a, a trip that, you know, is just all fun in um, <clears throat> travel. Uh, we go to London because we do make money for the community when we're there, and the cost of going there is, you know, uh, the money that is brought in justifies the cost for going there. And it was, as usual, a successful trip. Um, we were talking with two large jurisdictions in the gaming industry where we are hoping to have a agreement with. We are starting to make agreements with more and more jurisdictions out there. And unfortunately, we haven't had that with Quebec or Canada. And if we were to be able to get something in the way of an agreement with Quebec or Canada, we could have much more marketing deals for what we have for our Mohawk online. And we could be bringing in much more money for this community. But unfortunately, they haven't come to talk at the table. Okay. Well, thank you, Chief Gina Deer, for joining me today. I'm sure I will have you back in again. Uh, We will take a break, and then we'll be joined by Chief Ross Montour and Chief uh, Harry Rice. And welcome back to the Watarda Partyline Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and today is MCK Friday. And, and for the second part of the show, I'm joined by Chief Ross Montour and Chief Harry Rice. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello, welcome. You guys have been very busy. 
<laughs> Is that I'm, I'm not Re- being sarcastic really? or nothing? Uh, hey, I keep up on what's going on. I uh, uh, want to talk a little bit about um, Gaudio Nordo and the funding. Yeah, I sure. think we should start there. Yeah, because that was <clears throat> very good news. Uh, you got to excuse me for my voice. Uh, I have a sore throat. Um, yeah, great news. Um, very, very exciting. Very pleased. Um, I, I, there's too many words to express how, how, how great this is. It, 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 it's huge. It's really huge. Um, uh, well, maybe just talk a little bit. Sorry, I'm not just as bad. Um, just it's talk, Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Uh, just maybe talk a little bit. Like, just what are the implications for this for the school? Because you know they've been around a very long time. They've struggled for funding. I know I was involved in helping proposal write for them, bring some funding in, and I know it's been a struggle a very long time. <clears throat> uh, uh, what's going on, Gagora again? You just. The thing I would say, look, at, from from the beginning, before last election, uh, Harry and I separately were both uh, approached um, uh, uh, in terms of the difficulty they they were facing in terms of their funding and in their in terms of their future, and um, so uh, we both we both made a commitment that you know if we ended up on council, that uh, we would do whatever we we needed to do in order to uh, advance to a positive outcome for them. Um, so the, the the difference between what we were able to acquire for secure funding for them is is is, is it's really astonishing when you think about it. The amount of money they 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 did not have. Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to this, uh, the amount of uh, fundraising activity that parents had to put out in terms of being able to make enough to see that the salaries and the programs and the resources were available for the children. Okay, uh, is it, the, the difference is astounding, and 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 they're really happy about it. And I'm really happy about it. And, and one of the things, right from the outset, when we, when we were we were driving this, Harry and I, and 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 the Grand Chief as well, who was also on our portfolio team, um, was that this is the right thing to do. We have to do this. Okay, we have to protect um, the Gariwanoru. Uh, any asset that the Gatunwangi has in terms of um, uh, ensuring that our language continues forward and the knowledge of our culture with from from children, even uh, young ones, babies, okay, was vital and, the, and and really the ability to as as much as we can create first language speakers. The best opportunity lies with the program. Um, and that's not to diminish any other oh, no, uh, no. language uh, uh, programs that we have in the community. Um, th- it was to make sure that they could survive and not have to worry about the, you know, the uh, wolves at the door, so to speak. You know, like, uh, that, that, that was really hard. But uh, we, we were able to acquire uh, funding. And I'll let Harry tell uh, people who don't know already. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we... First of all, being being a um, a parent and a fundraiser person for for the school for quite a long time now, um, it, it's very satisfying. Whether I did this, or, well, I don't want to say I did this. Whether I was a part of this or not, it, it's gratifying that it's done. Uh, that they don't they don't have to worry about funding anymore. Um, I think that they. Uh, <clears throat> they're going to continue doing their, their, they, some of their fundraisers are staples in Kahnawake. Mm-hmm. People love the the Christmas bingo and the Easter bingo. Uh, those are going to continue uh, and they're going to be using those funds for other field trips or what have you. What uh, Other stuff that isn't going to be covered in uh, the funding agreement. Um, but to have that finally have that um, release 
that they don't have to worry anymore. Yeah, because it go it, every year it was the same kind of uh, thing, yes, you yes. know, not having core funding. And I think what what was a little bit more symbolic about it is because it's International Year of the Indigenous Language, and you know, I've had several visits from different community uh, representatives and different organizations, and one of the things is people have talked about how important uh, language and culture are to us right now and how far ahead of the game we are so helping one branch that's been there and i don't remember the exact years of how long but i know it's quite a long years who didn't have funding and now have that it's just again another shot in the arm for us to continue developing uh, to be fair i mean it, well, number one it's been 30 years 30 yeah okay because i years. couldn't remember um uh, uh, the uh, it's not that they didn't have any funding it was a lack sufficient funding. funding. Yeah. Okay, and they were in a perpetual state of uh, of, of uh, funding starvation. Yeah. Um, and I know and living listen. proposal to proposal because they they did a lot of proposal writing yeah. and uh, you know trying to get money from here, trying to fit in, but at the same time stay autonomous. And I think yeah. that was Joel. I'll use Jolie's words. You know. The uh, the uh, one of the things that I, I I think we would be remiss to overlook is that the the role of step by step. Absolutely. Uh, in, in looking after the uh, the daycare age children, yeah, you know, with uh, at Avery's Playhouse uh, was important. That that speaks to Debbie uh, Debbie Delille's involvement uh, with uh, Gary Winoro, the uh, the entity. In, in terms of really advocating uh, for that. And I that. think as a community, that's been one good thing that people have always done that, tried to help where they could. So to me, this is like a good shot in the arm. Yeah, and the, the, the community has always been supportive yeah. of, of, of the Go to Unoto School, mm-hmm. um, whether it be helping out uh, at the bake sales or car washes or whatever fundraiser they have, or just... A donation. A I don't donation. know how many times oh. things would go up, and yeah. you know, within five minutes, yeah. they the, got the, support. The, so you know, the, the support was yeah. uh, was is huge. Yeah, because it is our language. Yeah, and and it's our it's our kids. Uh, it's an opportunity for a golden opportunity for children yeah. to learn the, the Mohawk language and the culture um, in a home environment and set it setting. Yeah, you, you. I don't many. I don't know any, if any other First Nation communities that offer that. Something to think about, too, is is that one of the struggles that they faced, uh, especially in, in, in recent years, was the push by, say, the province uh, to tie uh, provincial standards and programming uh, to the dollars that they, they received, um, which, which really kind of were in, in opposition. I, I don't want... I'm no, that's the exact correct way to put it, but to running counter to their to uh, their goals and their and, and their way of approaching teaching the language. And you know, historically, the mm-hmm. kids coming out of uh, Gary Unero entering into uh, say the survival school, um, often enough they performed at a higher level for things like maths and so on. So mm-hmm. whatever they were doing wasn't leaving them diminished. But by and, and even so. Um, Gunawake has always provided options for families and parents Absolutely. in terms of education. But one of the things, right from the outset, one of the principles that as a team we we all agreed on and we all um, adopted was that we're not looking at this in terms of um, education per se. This is really an exercise of of language uh, preservation, protection, and it's an investment in that, in our language, in our culture over the long haul. Uh, one of the things for me, and I did, it will be ongoing, uh, and I'm sure Harry will agree with that, is that you know that the, the, you start from there, but even with uh, ready water near it, yeah. You know the the fact that say a a a, a young single mother as an example uh, would be forced to, dis, to to decide not to 
commit her time to learn her language because she couldn't afford to, because she didn't have an income, because there wasn't support for that. You know, so uh, the way that I'm looking at it, the way I've looked at it is that it really needs to be from the cradle uh, to adulthood in order to have the best shot, you know. And and the thing was, you know, we we negotiated with, uh, uh, they're called DISC now, the Department of Indigenous Services Canada, or whatever. (laughs) They approached they approached us also uh, in 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 the fall to say you know like uh, a proposal about taking over the funding uh, for for guarding Winoru and they said well we're not educational experts but yet those were people that they were yeah. dealing with who were saying mm-hmm. well you know you have to follow these standards um, and and my view is look at you know yeah you, you, you we have experts in education here in Ganawage. we do have our own expertise. Yeah. Um, and by the you know by the way, the government was the they, they, of Canada. They were the ones via the residential school system, via <laughs> assimilation process, Absolutely. who attacked and, and and almost thoroughly destroyed Indigenous languages across yeah. Canada. Okay, how are they going to be the ones to dictate how we will Absolutely. get that back? And by the way, we haven't seen uh, the, the dollars. Uh, for the for language uh Reacquisition. No, we haven't. Well, uh, you're listening to K1037, De De Watarda, Party Line Talk Show. And welcome back to De De Watarda, Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Len Stacy, and today is MCK Friday, and I'm joined by Chief Harry Rice and Chief Ross Montour. And prior to going to break, we were talking about Gari and, and and actually the language programs. And, and honestly, we're very fortunate right now that we have a lot, you know, and we was even thinking of the language nest. And again, another great way for for moms and babies to to start before they go to you know like we have we've got pretty much the whole gamut and i have a question from a listener can you ask why doesn't council sponsor some people to take the course as if it was a job and i guess they're talking about ready when near that's wow um i know council uh supports um the language uh facility that's right here uh, I think that's open to all community members. Uh, although it, it, they have a five-year program, um, the first year being one hour, uh, well, actually two hours per week, uh, one per day, and then the, the the lessons increase as you as you progress in in, in the years. Um, as for uh, the Red Indian Year that's program, um, that can be uh, the the question can always go come up and for to to create a first language speaker but right now i don't believe there's any anything like that i i would i would add to that i mean that that was the way i always looked at it you know and as i mentioned before the break was was that uh, you know that there's there's uh radio water near it's and and where's where's the funding for that and um and, and so to the degree that we have talked about it i mean so we we have accomplished uh, a milestone for Gari and and it doesn't uh, it's it's also incumbent upon us to look at uh, ways of, of addressing the federal government in terms of and that's why I was touching on before the break yes is that you know there's all this talk and a commitment about reconciliation and so on and 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 recognizing the damage that was done to our languages uh, through the assimilation process and the residential school system that's one of the 94 calls to action um, and it's in the undrip and it's in all of those things. So I want I want the federal government to put their money where their mouth is. So far from what I've heard is that they've talked about translating documents into native languages, which is all window dressing. Yeah. Like it doesn't get to the heart of the of the of of the issue and it cannot be the federal government who decides how how that's accomplished that's that's for us to decide and so for the for the the caller the questioner um i i can only say at this point in time that 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 it remains a commitment uh at least for for us to see investigate and to press uh to see that that also becomes a reality 
um, because, uh, as I said, I mean, it, it's from cradle to adult. Absolutely. Um, and some of us old people who just don't, uh, <laughs> haven't had the opportunity. Well, okay, as the, oldest, as, the, as the oldest person in the room, let me, let me tell you this, okay? You know, I, uh, the, the guy at the head of the table uh, at the Mohawk Council came into council at a time when everybody who sat at that table was a first language speaker, mm. okay? And now you have uh, you have uh, uh, Gus Howie, uh, who is a speaker, uh, who has a, has a, a degree of, of fluency in the language, and and that's the only person that, that the grand chief can talk to in the language at the table, mm. um, and and that's a remarkable thing to consider. Is uh, in, in see I went I have it in my in my family my grandfather was on the council before there was a Mohawk council of Kahnawake. Ah. Okay. Uh, people knew him as Tahawita. Okay. And and he only spoke his language. Okay. He understood enough to not be taken advantage of, but he would only speak his language. And so all of those all of those discussions and all of those things that took place took place in Ganyageha. So I and, and 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 if we're going, we have a language law. Remember that? Yes. It's, it's yes. like twenty years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that true. You should go to the bank. If you go to the hospital, and you and, and you're a speaker, you should be able to have the person who's talking to you, delivering service to you, be able to do it in your language. Okay. Just like in Quebec. <laughs> okay. We got. I get all in, in my indigenous rights. Uh, Portfolio, yeah. you know, all kinds of documents from the from the Quebec government, you know, requesting this and that, all in French. Oh yeah, you know, so they're asserting it. Yeah, but and they it's, have it numbers. has to be us that has to assert as well. Yeah. So I guess in terms of, uh, oh wait, I have another question. Um, I, I, I guess um, in, in terms of education, are you both on the education portfolio as well? Yeah. 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 So maybe we could talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Unless you have something else you want to chat with, but uh, um, I was just given some topics. So. I, I, I'd like to, uh, to give a little bit of an update of my, on my own, uh, um, Your files, po- okay, portfolios, perfect, perfect. Uh, what I've been working on. Um, it's come to, uh, a couple of community members say, how come you haven't been on the radio, Harry? What's going on? What are you doing? What are you up to? Uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, I was involved with the uh, Gutty Winoto uh, project. Uh, but a couple of other things that I'm, I'm also... Um, I don't, I, I'm not spearheading or, 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 or uh, trying to be the champion on any of these. Uh, there was a Orange Shirt Memorial... Um, which happens uh, once a year, as everybody knows. Uh, but we we want to the group of uh, ladies and a couple of gentlemen um, want to have a, um, a actual memorial for residential school survivors mm-hmm. and the ones who passed. Uh, so that's that that that's one of the things I'm working on. I'm also on the animal control um, uh, portfolio which we're in the midst of creating uh, laws for uh, different different situations. Uh, and I'm, I'm also on the, the search and rescue portfolio, um, which has just became, become a um, actual entity within the MCK. Oh, okay. Um, they're not just an offshoot of uh, whatever. They're, they're like... Um, the police force or the uh, fire department, the ambulance services. The, the, it, it is a service to our community, a search and rescue team, which is which is really really. And they've like, been all over to help a lot of different places. And yeah, it's really neat that they actually do that. Yeah, yeah, and and a lot of it has been done um, through their own their own funding. They they've they've paid their own way to um, get from A to B or or for the the. <clears throat> the equipment that they use. Um, uh, every time I go into a meeting, they, they, I spend this much on this, and uh, hey, man, that's that's great. You, you're you're following uh, your own. You want to do it, so you're following your thing. If there's anything, if there's any chance of it getting reimbursed, then you will. But yeah. at, at, at right now, they're they're um, they're looking into getting m- equipment that they need. Uh, through funding through the, the department. Um, and then the, one of the last things I'm going to mention is um, I've been, from day one, uh, Christine kind of took me under her wing, Christine Dion Zachary. 
Um, she was uh, a resource to uh, continue on on the heritage portfolio. Yes. And um, she took me on the side, and and we. Uh, I gained a lot of uh, um, information from her, a lot of knowledge from her, and uh, I I joined on uh, the heritage uh, portfolio. And one of the departments in the uh, portfolio is uh, Parks Canada. So all the there's a bunch of different sites around uh, Montreal that are through Parks Canada that they want to, um, they, they always want to know what we think of this or that, whatever. And uh, one of the big things right now is um, uh, they want to, they want to have the, the church become a historical monument, which is huge, uh, especially with the, with the canonization of Cattery. Um, so those are a couple of things that I'm working on right now. Um, we're always busy. There's always something coming up in council this way or that way. Or, but I, I think I, I felt... I feel obligated that I have to let the community know that I'm not just working on the Gary Winoda yeah. uh, project. Yeah. Ross, you have a few minutes, so maybe a few things that you're currently working on. Well, okay, I'll start with um, uh, the archaeology uh, also. Uh, Christine Zachary Diom also uh, had approached me uh, when, I, when I got on to council. Um, and, and you know what? It, 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 the, I was, you know, you know, I was an artist before I was there, yes. and and the and, and the thing that always interested me was the, the historical aspect of our people, as subject matter, a uh, certain period of time, our relationship with uh, uh, the people that came to our land, uh, and so on. So that's it was a, a natural interest to me. Um, Already, you know, and we used to talk. Uh, she would come into uh, my gallery, come into my shop, and we would we would talk about it. Um, so I, I I more than willingly jumped on to that um, because I for her, I mean, it, Christine had um, uh, who also was running in the by election, uh, really kind of built that whole uh, aspect of, of activity at the council was archaeology and duty to consult rights uh, uh, and research, which I am the portfolio chief for rights and research, and uh, I'm on the uh, heritage uh, file uh, for archaeology. And one of the things that, we're, that, that I've been working on um, and is, um, number one, moving archaeology uh, into and under the umbrella of uh, indigenous rights and research um, because it is the foundation and you know it may not sound like the most sexy thing it might sound a little <laughs> dusty and everything yeah. you know history bones uh, pottery shards and so on but you know we have to establish that we are the people that were here okay when the Quebec government says to the Mohawks of Kahnawagi that, you know, they were here before us and that the people that were here were the St. Lawrence Iroquois. Excusez-moi, ben non. <laughs> but we also had yesterday, I had a chance to speak to Christine as a candidate, and she mentioned one thing, you know, that the Eurons are now trying to claim that this was their area. So I think it's important that the work that's being done there kind of supports, you know, uh, our claims and even claims to the scenery and things like that, well, you know. You know, I mean, the, one of the things that uh, Christine, as, as uh, an employee, as a contract worker involved in, in archaeology, and who was also a part of my team to in order to build this archaeology unit um, underneath uh, rights and recognition uh, rights and research rather um, as we've been attending meetings in Montreal the city of Montreal has been uh, working to establish a protocol uh, having to do with archaeology and as you know or you may know that there were human remains that were found at the Champlain and that's when she first got involved yeah. With, with pushing for this to happen. But also, and, and I said at a meeting there, okay, we said, uh, like I want to introduce a new word into it. You, people keep talking about repatriation, right. repatriation of this, repatriation of that. And I said, you know what? We're not patriarchal. We don't come from a patriarchy. Okay, I want you to accept the word repatriation. And so one of the things we're really fighting to do is mm. to get uh, the remains that have been found, Sherbrooke and Peel, Champlain, 
to have them um, reinterred. And we will do that, and we will do that here. We have a site in Donawangi, so wow. we're working very hard towards Sounds that. Sounds like lots of work that's ha- and a lot of variety of areas. Every time I have a chief on, it's like really all a lot of different places, so yeah. lots of work happening. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Harry, for joining me, and uh, thank you to Gina, who came in today for MCK Friday. Coming up Monday is KOR Storytelling with Zuzay McGregor and uh, Leo Daibo. Up next with the 1 o'clock news is Kathleen Speckard. Have a great afternoon. Onigiwahi. Onigiwahi.